Hallelujah. Are you happy? You don't look happy. Well, you're about to be happy now because you're going to listen to the word of God and if that doesn't make you happy, nothing else can do. Okay? The word of God is powerful and it is alive and it is for our strength and nourishment. Amen? John chapter 6, it talks about, do not labor about the food that perishes, but labor about the eternal food that leads you into eternal life. So we're not just to subscribe to the food of this earth, while that is important, but there is much more important food for us, and that is the word of God, okay? That is what Jesus said, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen? amen. So we need the food of God's word, okay? Yes. Say amen. amen. Good. Amen? Are you happy? Okay. Hallelujah. Your sorrow will soon turn to joy. <laughs> Amen. I want to talk about prayer a little bit more. I just want to continue from last week. I want to pr talk about prayer and also how it is related with our spiritual journey. Okay. How many of you understand that prayer is important, right? You know that prayer is important and without uh, active prayer life, we won't be able to achieve much, right? And as I was talking about it the other day, that God has made us his kings and priests and our priestly ministry is to just minister to the Lord and just be at his presence and, and just seek his face. But also we have a kingly ministry that is to stand at your rightful place of authority and just knock the devil out, okay? The image of Christianity or the image of your walk with Jesus should not be that you are a weak person, right? The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So it's not about your strength, your capacity, your, your greatness, it's about the one who is in you, okay? So look at all the people that God used, like totally people who the world would consider as failures, right? Even when Jesus had to create a team to save the entire earth, he chose fishermen, tax collectors, the people who normally we would classify as, okay, these are not worthy people. But he used them, he put his spirit in them, and these people became the people who went about to transform the world. Amen? So God's selection on your life is not based on your merit. It's purely based on His grace upon you. Amen? So I don't want you to disqualify yourself because God has qualified you. Many a times we start to disqualify ourselves. We feel that we are not worthy, we have not done enough, we, have not, we won't do enough, but God has qualified us, okay? Amen? Amen? So let no voice of the enemy be entertained in your mind. Just know how to filter the word of God. Amen? Amen? But why prayer is important so that we can sharpen our facility to hear God and to understand his word. Oof, that was sharp. Okay, let's read this. Uh, John chapter 16. Verse 12 onwards. Okay. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Say all truth. All truth. Okay, when there is all truth, how much lie is there? No lie, okay? So what will the spirit of God do? He will lead us to all truth, okay? For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and tell you the things to come. Okay, so what are we doing when we are engaging in a lifestyle of prayer, 
when we when we start to maintain our discipline prayer life what happens the things of the spirit become real to us okay uh, as we studied yesterday we'll come back to that first corinthians chapter 2 verse i think it's 16 let's just look at it uh i think it's one scripture ahead about how a natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit yeah but a natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned so we all have a spiritual capacity inside us we are a spirit man and we are clothed with this amazing flesh but if we only live by the flesh we will never be able to understand the things of the spirit okay and in galatians chapter 5 we read about how the life of the spirit is important okay the walk of the spirit is important and let me tell you the walk of the spirit is equal to the walk of power right if you want to walk as a powerful believer as a powerful disciple it is impossible without you having a prayer life amen as i said you see by coming to church and by receiving the word i am sure the blessings of the lord will follow into all of our lives right in fact just by the nature of you being dedicated and coming to church the blessing will come into your life but i cannot guarantee that you will walk in power you see even paul he was such a great guy but when he is writing corinthians he is saying it is not about my greatness i preach christ crucified and what i preach it is demonstrated by power right and that is what god said that i will make you a sign and a wonder okay so if you want to live a life of power walk in victory do the impossible how is that possible with a spirit life amen because it says the one who is in me so it is not your capacity but if you have to start to operate with the one in you it begins in your prayer room it begins in the secret place amen amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah even when jesus was at the house of mary and martha so one sister was totally distracted by all these things but there was mary and she was at the feet of jesus and what did jesus say that she has chosen the better part and no one will be able to take it from her amen so you need to choose the better part and that is building your life on the foundation of prayer amen psalms 11 verse 3 says if the foundations are destroyed how can a righteous man stand and for our spiritual life the foundation should be the word of god and the spirit of god amen and how does the spirit of god operate in our life when we start actively participating in prayer life amen, amen. and if your spiritual life is only on on a saturday or sunday evening then you're probably in danger right but if you know that you're a spirit man and you need to feed your spirit with the word of god with prayer you know that your spirit man is getting stronger day by day amen, amen. you see that is why i always encourage praying in the spirit that is what paul is saying that when i pray in an unknown tongue i am edifying myself you know when you enroll into this prayer what is happening you are in the school of edification and the more you pray what is happening the more edification process is happening in your life even when you don't realize it but it is happening your character is being built the dreams that god has put in your heart begin to come out and what the spirit starts to transmit what god is saying to you you see you have the spirit of god residing inside you do you believe that right that's what paul says that he has made a permanent residence in our heart and you have also your spirit and they both are living together right so what god spirit does is he starts to communicate things see for example i have a mic here there is no wire why because it is digitally transform tra i mean transmitting something to a device there called a receiver so our spirit 
is like a receiver that receives and God's spirit is like a transmitter which receives from God and starts to transmit to us. But if we live all our life with our receiver off, we will never be able to hear his voice. But you know what? God is always speaking. So don't say that I have never heard the voice of God. Maybe your receiver is off. And how do you turn it off? By subscribing into prayer. By beginning a lifestyle of prayer. And if you see anybody that God has used to demonstrate his kingdom on earth, these are people who have a very active prayer life. Amen. I was just reading about Smith Wigglesworth and he was a great evangelist and God used him powerfully in his time. And he was just a plumber and he didn't even have the capacity to talk properly. So his wife was doing most of the talking. So it's in one instance it says, even when he had to go to buy groceries, he did not have the capacity to talk properly. So his wife used to do all the talking. But this man understood and one day in a similar setting, he sat and he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that day his life changed completely. Since then he began to enroll into prayer. And I'm just going to read out of his, like, I read this, this is so powerful. The author says, Wigglesworth never went more than 15 minutes without reading the word of God. And that was one of the main responsibilities of the power that God has deposited in his life. In fact, this is what Smith Wigglesworth said. I never consider myself fully dressed unless I have a copy of the word of God in my pocket. <laughs> and this is a guy, every 15 minutes, he used, to, he used to have a pocket Bible. He used to take it out and start reading it. Like just as you use your phone nowadays, the same way he would use his pocket Bible. He used to open it and read it. What is happening? He's constantly feeding his spirit. And one day, you realize that your spirit man becomes so powerful that no sickness can stand against you. The moment you lay hands on the sick, they recover. Why? Because now, you have built your spiritual capacity. Amen? Amen. So our main agenda in life should be to build our spiritual capacity. Amen? Not just to become buff physically. You can do that. But also to become spiritual people who have great capacity to speak. So if praying for 10 minutes is difficult for you today, your goal should be that I increase my capacity so that I come to a point where praying 30 minutes is easy for me. And then keep growing, keep growing. You know what happens? When you start to become responsible for your life, God thinks, okay, now this guy is responsible. Let me trust him with some of my power because it will never happen without us going through this phase. Amen? 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 This is not to condemn you, okay? This is to inspire you to spend more time in prayer. And as I'm speaking, I'm speaking for myself. Amen? Look at the life of Jesus. He is God in flesh. He is logos. He is written word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And he is now incarnated as Jesus. And he spent most of his nights in prayer. In Luke it says, then he departed from the multitudes, he went up to the mountain. And what did it say? He prayed all night. Anyone prayed all night? <laughs> if you have, please lay your hands on me and bless me. <laughs> because I have not. I have tried, but I probably can't do it. But I will. So, what is that? Look at the life of Jesus. And again and again, he used to separate himself from the crowd and go into his secret place in prayer. And I believe that is one of his main keys of walking in power. Right? Look at the life of Jesus. He has to heal the sick, raise the dead. He has to suffer all this persecution. Do you think that is possible without a life of prayer? And even before he began his ministry, what did he do? He went to the mountain, into the wilderness. 40 days, what was he doing? Fasting and praying. And it mentions that as he came down, 
he came down with the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, even though he received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, heavens opened up and there was a public proclamation that this is my beloved son. But when he went to his prayer time, then it mentioned that he received the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are many powerless believers today. But that should not be the case. Let us be people who carry the power of God in our life. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor, I need to pray more. I said, I need to. You don't say you need to pray more. Say, I need to pray. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let me tell you one more secret. Are you learning something today? Yes. Okay, John chapter 17. Verse 7 and 9. No, so, sorry, 8 and 9. Verse 8 and verse 9. Let's read it together. Okay, for I have given to them the words which you have given to me. You see, Jesus, his main mandate was to give the word of God to us, right? Although he came to die for us, to take our sins on the cross, so that through his resurrection we may have life. But in John 17, 17, it says that, sanctify them by the word. Uh, in fact, in 17:14 it says, "I have given them your word." Okay, this is just before he goes to the cross, and he says, "I have already completed my work. I have given them your word." Let's come back to verse eight. For I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I have come forth from you, and they have believed that you have sent me. Verse nine. I pray for them, I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given to me, for they are yours. You see, Jesus, even though he has given you his word, what is he doing? He's praying for the disciples. And in this amazing garden called Gethsemane, when Jesus is praying, he's asking his disciples, can you come and can you stand with me in prayer? And what happens? They are dozing off. And he's coming back and saying, can you stay awake with me for a few more minutes? And he comes back and he finds him asleep again. Amen. I like that scripture because I think if I was there, I would also have slept. But that is the love of God for us. Amen. And one thing that I understand about the spirit of God, that it will never bring you to a place where you feel pressured about anything. But it will always be a small urge of the spirit inside your life where you feel that I think this is a season where God is taking me more into prayer. Amen? Amen? And you will see that those seasons, those times are really beneficial for your life, your walk with God. Amen? See, you cannot depend on someone else's prayer for your spiritual walk. Right? It's good that you come to church and there is community, there is prayer, but all your life you cannot depend on that. You need to have your personal walk with Jesus. If you have accepted Jesus as your personal savior, you need to have a personal relationship with that savior. Amen? It's like I married my wife, but now I have a mediator to talk to her. Like, can you tell her this? How will it be? Will we ever grow in our relationship? No, because now that I'm joined with her, I have all the right to talk to her directly. But many people are only talking to God through their pastors <laughs> or their leaders. Amen? And I feel some people like it because it brings them to a place of honor or whatever. But I don't want to be in that place. I want you to have your personal connection with God. And that is what I am inspiring you. Have your walk with God. Because where the Lord is leading us as a church, as a family, I think it is a big time for us but the foundation has to be right. Amen? And even the message of faith, even though I speak a lot of faith and on the spirit of faith, I feel that if 
the message of faith is also not based on the message of prayer, then it just becomes transactional. Where we come to God, okay, God, I want this, I believe for this, and we receive it, and they are gone. Right? The Spirit of God, wherever He comes, He brings intimacy with the Spirit. And that is what we need to pursue. Amen? Mary choose the better portion. So let us all become people who will choose the better portion. Amen? You see, if I want to get to know someone, I need to spend time with them. Amen? And the way to get to know your God is to spend time with Him. And one easy way is to reach Him by His Word. Because He has given us His Word. The more we fellowship with the Word, the more we know. You see, if I even read about, I am reading these days a few books by a specific author. And the more I'm reading his books, the more I'm trying to understand, okay, this is his personality, right? So if you read the book, if you read his word long enough, you will never serve a God who has two faces, right? Some people, today morning, God is good, and the other morning, like, oh man, God is so judgmental. Okay, that is not the God we serve, right? And the more I'm reading the book of that author, the more I'm trying to understand his personality. Okay, this is how he functions because I understand it through his writings. And as we spend time in God's word, we will know who God is. And let us know personally who God is through his word. Let us not know him by someone else's story or someone else's testimony. I want you to know God to the word of God. Amen? 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 Do you want to be challenged in your prayer life? Okay, let's read a scripture then. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Can, can we read it in uh, NLT? If you have NLT. The, the New Living Translation says like this. Never stop praying. <laughs> Isn't that amazing translation? It says never stop praying. It doesn't mean that now you become like those monks who are always chanting something. No. It means once you develop it, don't lose the rhythm. Don't drop it. Be at it. Keep doing it, right? You see, because we are in his world where everything is very quick. Maggie is in two minutes. Now blink it. I ordered one day. And it reached at my house in four minutes. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> Everything is so quick. But I don't know. Maybe the things of the Spirit are not too quick. You need to go through the process of learning. Right? And even if you have to become fit in your body, it is not a quick process. I wish it was quick. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work, hard work, dedication, right? All those athletes who have made it, you will never say, oh man, he's so lucky. <laughs> if you say like that, people will think you're crazy because it's not about luck out there. It's about what they have done before they came to that place to run. Amen? So if you want to be a man or woman, that carries the power of God, you need to demonstrate it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all. I mean, last night I was speaking a little bit on persistent prayers. You know, Prayer is not that, okay, it's not that you have issued a notice to God. God, this is what I want, let it be done. Sometimes you have to be persistent in your prayers, right? About that lady who, I mean, she did not get the right judgment. But day and night, she went on again and she was pestering the judge. One day, she woke, one day he woke up and said, tonight I'm going to settle this because she is being very persistent. And even that woman who came to Jesus and says, 
I will not give the children's bread to dog or something like that. It says, whatever falls off the master's bread, the table, even the dogs eat it happily. What is that showing? She is not offended by anything. She is just persistent because she wants to receive that healing. And Jesus said, I have not seen faith like this. Amen. So there is value to your persistent praying in the spirit. So when you pray in the spirit, your mind is turned off. Your mind may be wandering here and there. But keep doing it. Keep praying in the spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few more scriptures and then we'll go ahead. Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to the Father in private. Okay. What it means is not that every time you need to pray, you need to go to a specific place and pray. It means that you need to have a personal prayer life, right? Don't, you see, I told you the other day also, if I give the mic and I invite you to pray, everyone would love to come and pray, right? But you won't have that same excitation, uh, excitement maybe in your room to pray because nobody is hearing you. But we need to have a personal prayer life, a prayer walk with Jesus. And it says, but when you pray, Go away by yourself. Let me challenge you. Let there be time where you are away by yourself and nobody knows where you are, but you know that you are developing your spiritual capacity. You are growing in prayers. You are growing in the Lord. Amen? And if you want that the temptations of this earth will not have a hook on your life, it will only happen when you are strong in your spirit, man. If you're weak in your spirit, man, the enemy, for the enemy, you're a very easy target. He just says, let me put a temptation on his life. And what happens? You take that bait. And you keep being tossed here and there by the enemy. But the moment you try to spend more time in prayer, what happens? He's not able to use the same weapons that he used because you've become strong. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah! Romans chapter 8, verse 26. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness even when we do not know what to pray. Have you been in position where you do not know what to pray? Anybody here who's been in the position where it says, I don't even know what to pray? All right. Just pray in the Spirit. Because naturally you will not have all the awareness what to pray at all times. But what you need to do is pray in the spirit. Amen? So, I wanted you to have an experience of prayer. A personal life with God. A personal prayer with God. But don't be people who only pray all the times. Right? We have to find the right balance of living a life of victory but also managing your own personal prayer life with God. So that is why the right balance is the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Amen? The Spirit of God and the Word of God. So we need to feed on God's Word and meditate on His Word and do what? Maintain a prayer life. And as you do that, what happens? In the spirit realm, your words, they start carrying power. And then when you stand in a room and make these bold declarations of faith, it is not empty. It is going with power. Amen? See, if I give you a hammer today, and I tell you to break this wall, and if that hammer is only 20 grams, how much time will you take to break that wall? It will take forever. But if I give you a hammer that is 10 kg, maybe in one knock you will be able to blow that Right? So similarly, your words, if they need to carry power, you need to subscribe to prayer. Right? I know many people don't like hearing this because it brings the responsibility back to you. Right? Normally when you come to church, we put the responsibility on the pastor. I'm giving it back to you. <laughs> I have my own responsibility. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And that is why a life of prayer and a life of faith is important. Amen? Amen? That is why in Hebrews it says, keep this mystery of faith with a pure conscience. 
Amen? Faith may work in your life, but it will not bring you to a place of victory if it is not backed up by these small foundations. Amen? Are you understanding this? See, I will keep preaching until you don't understand. And I want you to understand. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let me give you four points. And then we'll close. Four points about the word of God. The first point is read the word. Okay? You know, you need to have a disciplined reading in your life. Okay? It's very true. Readers are learners. And learners are readers. If you're reading God's word, what is happening? You're feeding yourself with the word of God. Right? Don't wait for... I'm waiting for the time where I will have the leading of the Holy Spirit to read the word. Right? You will be a malnourished Christian. Don't wait for the leading of the Lord. Just make it a discipline that I will read God's word every day. Is that difficult? Yes, it's very difficult. <laughs> but once you start doing it, you'll get a hook of it. And then, once you're standing on that foundation, everything will become easy. You see, unless you do not know the word of God, the devil will come with all kind of lies. He will come with the lies that, you see, God has left you alone. You are nowhere in God's eyes. You are all alone. But if you know God through his word, what happens? You have the right standing. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You see, the truth is out there. God loves you. He's given his life for you. But until you know the truth, it is as good as a lie. So what you need is revelation and knowledge of the truth. You see, God has blessed you. Do you know God has blessed you? He doesn't want you to be sick. Do you know that? Yes. God does not put sickness in your life to teach you. But if you don't know these simple truth, you know what will happen? Devil will keep having a hold on your life. It's power. Okay, read the word. The second is Consume the word until the word consumes you. <laughs> Amen? As the doctors say, you are what you eat. If you eat junk, you are... <laughs> I didn't say it. But if you eat healthy, you become a healthy person. So what do you need to do? You need to have a right intake. You see, the moment you're sick and you go to the hospital, what do the doctors ask you? Did you eat something bad? Is there any food poisoning? Why? Because what we eat starts to affect us. If you eat Maggie, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you will not be able to have a healthy life. But if you start to eat these uh, boring greens and vegetables, somehow you will be healthy. You see, I'm not that healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to become people who start to consume God's word don't just read it as a storybook okay you see if you are only looking for stories all you will find is stories but if you're looking for the word of God to touch you and bring revelation in your life that will happen amen the scripture says that it is for a king's honor that the word is hidden in parables and he unveils it. You see, your responsibility is to go under and find the nuggets of truth for your life. Okay? Do you get that? The word of God is written for all of us. But you have to, as in your study, as you start to read, you find the word for your life. You find your Rema word. And once you get that Rema word, start meditating on it, start consuming it until that becomes a part of your life. Okay? For countless times, 
I have meditated on this one scripture, Ephesians 1.3. Now what happened? I think a part of my life is that scripture. So nobody can come and shake me from that foundation that I am blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So I am blessed. Why? Because I have consumed that word again and again and again. I have become that word. Right? It's a part of my life. So now, nobody can come and say, oh, do you know that you're not blessed? I said, I don't care. This is what the word says about me. And once I know that by revelation, just as Peter got this revelation, Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. So as you meditate and start to eat the word, the word gets inside of you and you get hold of that revelation, what happens? That revelation knowledge starts to change everything in your life. And that is why the prayer that I gave you, the Ephesians prayer, what does it say? How many of you have do, done that? None of you? Okay, one, okay. one two, three, four. I'll see a few. That is why that prayer is important. What is Paul saying? He's praying, I pray that I will have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You see, until the word of God is revealed by the Holy Spirit, it is just words. It will have no power. But we need to pray that God will reveal his written word to us. And all his desires, all the greatness that God has put in your life, the destiny, that amazing future that God has for you, is wrapped in his word. Amen? He says for all of you, I have plans to prosper you. I have great future for you. But if you don't know what the plan is, you will never be able to go there. And for you to know that plan, you have to start reading and consuming the word of God. Okay? Can you say this from today? I will consume God's word. Amen. You know, Jesus is not, God is not somewhere hidden in the mountains or in the deep. It's very simple. He is in his word. Right? It's a very simple statement. God is in his word. And we need to find him through his written word. Amen? The third and most powerful one, or one of the more powerful ones, is believe the word. <laughs> you see, believing is a great thing. <clears throat> believing is not just agreeing. In fact, believing is not your mental agreement with something. Okay? I can say something here, and you will just mentally agree with me, but that doesn't mean you agree or you believe in that. Okay? So for us, believing has to change. And for us to change our belief system or to change the way we think and operate, it is not a one-day process. It happens when you continually journey with the Lord. Right? And that is what it mentioned in Romans chapter 12, that do not be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the transformation of your mind, right? And the word here is a word called metamorphia. And metamorphia is a process of how a butterfly comes out from a caterpillar, right? It's two different things. But that process is called metamorphia. And in English, when this scripture was written, it says the transformation process. Maybe you believed one day that God is teaching me something through the sickness. But as you renew yourself on God's truth, now you have to come to a place where you are strong in God's foundation that says, God's plan is for my health and my welfare. Amen? Healing and divine health is my inheritance, is my portion. Okay? Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? That's it. You know, when you start believing, what happens? There is great power. So what you need to do is start believing in God's word. Tell your neighbor, start believing in God's word. Okay? 
don't stop at reading start believing it if god's word says that you are healed start believing it if god's word says that you are blessed start believing it and once you start believing what happens this great power is now available for your life but it starts when you start believing in god's word you see i was telling this yesterday also uh, one of the greatest destructions that mankind has seen is when those atomic bombs were dropped in japan right and about 98000 people were killed but this is old testament guy who was at war and one angel of the lord came and killed almost 200000 people one angel do you see the greatness of the god that we serve the power that in his armies of angel one angel has the capacity to knock out 200000 people amen and all these angels are sent as your ministering spirits but you will not be able to benefit from that until you do not believe you see believing has great power so what you need to do is believe in god's word and for you to believe an easy route to go there to believe is to start speaking it you know when you start speaking god's word what are you doing your mind is being convinced of the truth and then your heart is fully convinced and when your heart is fully convinced now when you release the word from the word the word of god from your mouth it goes like a sword and fights all the battles and you will always have victory amen the last point i want to share will come after this second last point uh, romans chapter 10 tell your neighbor that he is preaching better than you are responding okay uh, <laughs> romans chapter 10 verse 8 what does it say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach paul is saying that you know paul was a word of faith preacher and what is this the word is near you tell yourself the word is near me, word is near me. one more time the word is near me, is near me. and where is the word in your mouth you see the word first needs to come in your mouth as you start declaring god's word what happens when it's in your mouth then it starts affecting your heart the ultimate goal is for the word to have a complete possession of your heart and now it says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and now when you start to speak god's words scriptures start to declare everything becomes possible amen amen, amen. amen. so do not let the word tank in your heart go low keep speaking keep speaking keep reading keep believing what happens you're building your life on the strong foundation amen, amen. what was i teaching the other day what is the spirit of faith believing and speaking can you say one more time believing and speaking it's very simple two ingredients even maggi has three ingredients maggi masala and water the spirit of faith has only two ingredients believing and speaking so when i read what am i doing i am trying to convince my heart of the reality of the truth of god's word and what am i doing now then i'm starting to speak okay so i believe therefore i spoke so once you start speaking what is happening so even i have seen many people they come to me and say my confession didn't work you see why it doesn't work is because your heart is not convinced yet right see if you are just confessing with your mind your mind has no power it has to drop from your mind to your heart okay there are some things some memories or a certain belief system that are now dropped in your heart nobody can steal it from there 
Okay. Do you believe that God is good? Yes. Do you believe that He is only good sometimes? Yes. Is He good all times? Yes. That has to drop to your heart. So now even when tomorrow devil comes and says, see, the result says you have typhoid. Where is God? What do you say? My God is good and He only has perfect plans for me. What is this? Pure conviction that comes out from your heart. Now tomorrow when you don't have enough in your account, what happens? There's this pure conviction of the word of God in your heart. Amen? Amen. So how does it happen when you believe and speak, believe and speak, believe it? And we've had countless testimonies of people's life being changed by this very simple principle. Believing and speaking. Amen? Amen. See, you are not just a natural person. You are a spiritual person. And the things of the spirit are such which won't make sense to our natural mind. Amen? You are a spirit being and you live temporary on this earth in your flesh. So start to live and focus your life more by living by the spirit. And that is why praying in the spirit is important. It's a weird analogy but I'll share it anyways, okay? This is just my imagination. This is not in the Bible. This is not my theology, okay? Okay? <laughs> For those who will get it. Just imagine that you have a spiritual capacity. You have a spirit man. And if you totally ignore it, what happens? Spiritually, you are malnourished, right? There is nothing. There is no strength. And imagine you reach heaven because you bought the salvation ticket. You reach heaven, but you're like this malnourished person. There is no strength in your spirit, man. But imagine the person who took time on this earth to build his capacity, to become buff spiritually. When he enters heaven, what happens? See, on heaven you won't have the dimples on your face, all these cute features that you have today. It won't be there because you will be in a glorified body, right? So what will happen? The one thing that will stand for you is your spiritual capacity. Okay, are you getting my point? So don't reach heaven malnourished. <laughs> you still have time. Amen? You, I mean, I know it's not an exciting word and I'm not here to just excite you. I'm here to give you a reality check. So that we all need to enroll in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Should I share the last point? Last point is act on God's word. You see four points about the word of God. First was read the word. The second was consume the word until the word consumes you. Third was believe in the word. The last is act on the word. You know when you read the book of James, it is all about the first two chapters, it's all about acting on God's word. And one action of faith is speaking. Okay? Faith is your attitude and believing, uh, sorry, believing is your attitude and speaking is your action. So don't just be limited, okay, I believe, I believe, I believe. Just start acting on your faith. Right? Faith without action is? It's dead. So don't let your faith be dead. Be strong in your faith. Amen? You see, whenever God has told me something that it requires faith, it always looked like, am I crazy? Is there a need for it? Am I really hearing God? But the moment I took the action, God always backed his word. Amen. God will never bring you to a place where you will be at the mercy of people. Right? If God has told you, he will supply for it. Amen. Amen. What did the prophet tell the woman? Go bring all the vessels you can have. Imagine she bought all the vessels 
and before even the first vessel is filled, the oil runs out. So this lady is now embarrassed to the life. She will never listen to any prophet again. But God will never bring you to that place. You know what? The vessels finished and the oil stopped. Amen? So faith without action is dead. If God is telling you to step out in faith and give, give. Don't calculate logically. Amen? If God is telling you in faith to pray for someone, for the sick, go and pray. Lay your hands and pray for the sick. What will happen? If you've really heard God, he will get well. Otherwise, you go again and try it again. Keep doing it. Amen? <laughs> okay? Faith without action is dead. And once you act on the word is how? When you start speaking the word of God from your mouth. Amen? So what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to inspire you to live a life of the spirit and of the word. And how we live a life of the spirit is when we pray in the spirit, when we pray more, and the life of the word is we live by what God says about us. Amen? That is why you're human beings, not human doings, right? You're not limited by what you do. You are who God has created you, right? When I meet someone for the first time, normally people ask, what do you do? They don't ask any question, right? Because what you do will portray a picture in their mind. And some people are like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, you don't have to be ashamed. Just say, I am the beloved son of God most high. <laughs> and I am a work in progress. Don't you judge me. <laughs> God is creating me in his glory and I am, just wait. Just wait and watch. So what's happening? You're acting on the word of God. Amen? Are you understanding something? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, ha, ha, ha. Amen. In God's presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. So if you're not happy, you should be happy. And if you're not happy, you should be happy. <laughs> and if you're happy, you should be more happy. And if you're more happy, you should be more, more happy. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Paul is not writing this out of a five-star hotel. Rejoice. He's writing this out of the most dangerous prison. He's saying, rejoice. He's like, I don't feel like rejoicing, but I rejoice. Amen. What is he doing? He's acting on faith. Amen. And the more you trust God and rely on his word, and rely to act on his spoken word, the more God will entrust you with his vision. Right? It is boring to just live for yourself. You have to live for a bigger purpose, which is God's kingdom. I asked someone that, what is your desire? I said, no, just have this much uh, annual salary, and then I think I'll be stable. And outrightly, I just spoke to him, you are so selfish. And I was like, what did I say? And then I said, if you're living for yourself, you're selfish. You need to be in a place where all your needs are met, of course, and you begin to become a blessing for the people around you. What was God's commandment of blessing? He called Abraham and said, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. Right? The blessing is not just for you. It is for you to become a channel of blessing. But if God sees you, okay, now that I've blessed this guy, he's not being the right channel. Okay, let me find someone else who can be a channel of blessing. Amen? Yeah, so if you want that God will entrust you with what is, in, what is on his heart, you have to start acting on God's word. Amen? Amen. And faith, it always begins small. Look at Jesus, uh, his disciples, they came to Jesus and says, Jesus, how do we increase in our faith? He says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, and mustard seed is a very small seed, 
Jesus is not saying that do a lot. He said, if you have this small seed, you see, faith is not something that in one meeting you receive the gift, of, like the perfect gift. It's as a seed which is in all of your heart. The more you practice it, the more you water that seed, the more the plant grows. And how do we water it? Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, start speaking. So what do we need to do? We need to start speaking.